conversations like the one we're having today. Actor noise. Stop the madness. Again, ping people, guys. I'm going to start in about two minutes. Holler at your people. Get them in here. Um, when I got around to deciding to finally write this, because I, I uh, got way too busy for literally a decade, and by the time I sat down to write the book, I didn't feel that the general world and certainly this community was in the place of wanting to have to read five books. So, <laughs> so I didn't write it as such. This is a, obviously, by nature of its thickness, this is one of what would have been five, but it's done in a very different way. The point to all of this conversation is, this is what I'm going to be doing on my YouTube channel. Basically, in a shortened way, I'm eventually going to have, if you think about it, five books, 25 chapters each. That's 125 chapters, which is, as Alana or Michael or people who are members of the network, 125 hours. That's what it's going to be. However, I'm just going to do them on YouTube in 10-minute increments. So each hour will be six videos, six times 10. And that will turn into 750 videos. Hello! Uh, and so essentially, that is going to be part of what the YouTube channel becomes. So again, get your people over there because like with anything else, you know, a lot of it's going to be pushed out 100% as free. But over the course of time, uh, that can't be the case. So please get your people over there. Uh, all right, here we go. Now. The conversation that is actor noise, just so you guys understand, uh, are, is the following. We have, to under, we have to realize, and I already know that within this group, we have this. Even if I don't know you, we have this. And that is, oh, pencil, the belief and or desire and or ability. It can be one of the three. Belief, desire, actual ability to do various things as a talent, obviously. And there's Cassandra, have to say it right, Cassandra. Uh, good to see you. Um, and there's no person, this is the challenge, you guys, there's no person who can tell us, oh, you can't do that. This is part of the problem with believing and or wanting to be a multi-talent in various ways. Because this industry, again, as always, guys, I am not discussing being a gamer. I'm not discussing being an influencer. I'm talking about a performer's skill set. That's always the place that I'm coming from. Performer skill set. And yes, many people who perform at a young age do so by being on stage. Some of those people can sing. Some of those people are dancers. This is where the old triple threat comes from, right? Acting, dancing, singing, blah. But now there's a whole bunch of other things. And we've seen certain actors take on things where they had another skill set, such as playing the guitar or riding horse, whatever it may be. And here becomes the challenge, especially in this profession, because we tend to like to look at it as just performing, but it simply isn't true. Yes, there are a handful of people who are really good in two or three different areas. I'm not talking about genres. I'm talking about what Kevin has defined years ago. Two and a half decades ago, I came up with areas of industry. And back then, there were 43 that I counted that you could make a living at in this profession under the umbrella of being an actor. Now it's probably 47 or 48. But this causes a conundrum for us in the sense that we're busy trying to do it all. I always go back to sort of that, since they just came out with the Ricardos and it's nominated for an Oscar, I go back to that Lucille Ball, even if you're, even if you're young and, and, <laughs> and you never really saw uh, you know, the, the show with, with Lucille Ball and Ricky Ricardo, you could still find it on YouTube of this one particular episode where she was working on a candy assembly line. And the belt started going too fast, and she couldn't go fast enough. She starts putting them in her mouth. And eventually, she looks like a chipmunk, right? This is my metaphor in television for what we do as performers, and I call it actor noise. 
and it's extraordinarily damaging and extraordinarily dangerous. And I'm here to tell you, and this is why. You see, we don't have an entry barrier to saying, oh, but I could do stand-up, and I could do improv, and I could sing, and I can dance, and I could do voiceover, and I could do blah. We don't have any barrier to that. We can claim and say and do whatever we want. The challenge is trying to work in it and make money because it's hard to be good enough to be in the top 1% or 2% of any one profession, but you have to understand, y'all, these are all individual professions under the umbrella of being a performer. And there are people who are just doing that. Guys, uh, hey, I'll cop to it. I'm a smart ass. I wanted to do stand-up comedy. And I did. I did it just a skosh before I left Atlanta. I was horrible. Horrible. I came out here and I put two solid years into doing stand-up and improv. And I became very good at both of them. And I would say those, at least the improv skill set has evolved over time. But, but, and this is late 80s, guys. Worse hair than today, blah, blah, blah. This is back with Gary Shandling and Sam Kennison and Dice Clay. And I, this, is, I mean, this is when I was doing stand-up at the comedy store. So I became decent enough to finally get a phone call and someone wanting me to go to another city and do stand-up. I used to do stand-up with Tommy Davidson from In Living Color, and I knew if that kid kept going, he'd be a good one, and he was. But this was a moment in time that was a decision, which is a word you'll hear me talk about all the time. Welcome in, Paul Mish. And I had to make a decision, because back then, and to a degree today, you had to go on the road about 280 days out of the year to build a stand-up career. And I realized suddenly in that moment, holy shit, wanting to do stand-up, building up to be pretty skilled at stand-up, and then eventually a long way to go to be a tremendous stand-up, as it is with anything, I didn't want to do that. And at that moment, that's why I learned this a long time ago. And at that moment, look who's in the house. <laughs> Tony Boldy, my man. And at that moment, Tony, ping all your people. Get them here. Every Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Uh, at that moment, I realized, oh, shit. Doing stand-up isn't the same as pursuing film and television or commercials. It's, it's an entirely different industry. And that's what it is. It's a career. It's a profession. And I give you two examples of this. And they're important examples. Because I try to remind folk of this. And by the way... What I'm about to say is even more true today because of digital technology than even before. Because I would still say that a stand-up would have to be on the road quite a bit even today. Yes, coming out of post-pandemic. But just the ability we now have because of the digital technology, just like we're doing this. I mean, yes, this is only 30 minutes long. And no, it's not. Hey, Lillian, thanks for coming in. Hope you're well. Hope Speckles is good. Great to meet you on Friday night. Lillian was at my at the birthday thing. Uh, wee. So, you know, when you look at a lot of people, this is an example that I used when I started paying attention to the fact of like, oh, all these things require a professional level skill set. And it's, I don't use the word can't and the word impossible very much, y'all, but the bottom line is, it's pretty damn difficult to try and be 1% skill set in like four or five different things all at the same time. Thanks, Paul. Um, it's hard to do that. And so I give you two examples of what I mean by this. And one of the reasons why with today in digital, live streaming, all of those things, there's an element of this that actually becomes a little bit easier, but you still have to have the skill set. Hey, Ben, welcome in. Um, and it is this. I encourage you to go back, because you have to do this later in someone's career. You can't do it early in their career. But let me give you two examples. Whether you like them or not, it's not the point. Will Ferrell and Bill Maher. I'm doing this on purpose because I brought up stand-up and improv that I did. So Will Ferrell, sketch improv, right? Saturday Night Live, Bill Maher, stand-up comic. And what I mean by 
actor noise and stop the madness is very, very, very simple. Go back and tell me how many commercials Will Ferrell did before you saw him on Saturday Night Live. And just so you know, I can just help you out now. The answer is going to be zero. And let me ask you, how many politically incorrect or how many magazine hosting type panel format guest shows Bill Maher did while he was also building his stand-up career? Let me go ahead and help you out with the answer. The answer is zero. Why? Well, it's pretty simple. Because they were only focused on doing that one thing. That's it. Oh, it's like a city slickers moment, like the one thing. That's all they were doing. Will Ferrell wasn't busy trying to do feature films and guest stars on te- He wanted to be on Saturday Night Live, period, full stop. He wanted to do sketch, goofy, that's what he wanted. And so that was his focus. Yes, after being on that, during being on that, when he becomes a success, Bill Maher, nearly probably 15 years, if not more, I don't know the exact timing of when he got the contract from ABC for Politically Incorrect initially, and of course was eventually fired, and now has one of the most successful shows. Hey, Marilyn, good to see you. Has one of the most successful shows on HBO. But what I'm sharing with you is one thing. One area of performance was their focus. Because once you become successful up here in one area, guess what happens in other performance areas or other interests you may have? Guess what happens? All the dominoes fall. You have to knock one of them over. They're all connected, you guys. But we tend to, because of our skill set and our desire to perform, we tend to try to be building a career in five or six different careers simultaneously, and we don't even realize it. Guys, I'm doing this live because I didn't completely make this mistake, but I did. I did. I don't know where my career would be today. Um, Take care, Lillian. Uh, I don't know where my career would be today versus where it is had I not founded the Actors Network, which is how I actually happen to know so many wonderful people. And I'm thankful for that. Uh, Jason Stewart in the house, look at that. Uh, What up, JS? Good to see you, bro. Um, I don't know where my career would be today had I not founded the Actors Network by accident. I didn't do it on purpose, it just happened over the course of time. But it doesn't matter, the reality is For the first 10 years, think about that. For the first 10 years, I put a ton of time into building that organization. I felt good about it. I'm not not sitting here complaining about it. I'm not denigrating it. What I'm telling you is, when you split your focus that much, which I did, the Actors Network took over my life. Uh, 70 to to 90% of my time went towards the slow growth of that organization. If that was all, and again, I'm not talking about being a narcissist, I'm talking about being hyper-focused on your career. If I had just stayed dialed in, I had just read for Tarantino twice for Reservoir Dogs, not a joke, I had just read for guest stars in LA Law and other things, what I'm telling you is, Mickey's in the house, good to see you girl, Uh, what I'm telling you is, I split my focus severely. It wasn't with another performance thing, it was just with an organization, which by the way, and I've said it for years, would have been the same thing as getting married and having two kids. When we do these things, guys, it is hard to stay focused on just one thing. It is. But I'm also sharing with you, it's a key, in my opinion, to being successful on a large scale in this profession of performing anywhere in the world. It doesn't matter where you are. It doesn't matter what that skill set's supposed to be. You know, they've had America's Got Talent and America... American Idol for a long time. But how many people can you count on two hands out of all the years of that who actually have made it in the music industry? Like five. So just understand, this is part of my point. I'm not telling you to stop doing something, but as I like to say, just because you used to be proficient at something 
doesn't mean you're able to maintain being proficient to the level of being an uber success at all of them at once just because you did them for a while. You may have to trim back a couple and put hyper focus into one because when I finally started to book television, I realized that's kind of what I wanted to do. I still believe every actor should have to do stand up and I believe every actor should do improv. But that's a training skill set thing. It's not a career choice. I don't regret having not chosen to continue with stand-up. I'm glad I did it for as long as I did. What I don't have to do today is look back and wonder, shit, I wonder what that would have been like. Because I did do it, and I did it to the point of being paid. And then I stopped, because I decided I wanted to focus on film and television. I've never even done a ton of commercials. Um, did a lot of daytime. But I'm just sharing with you that I have the resume I have because I've made almost all of my mental emotional, psychological focus on what I started getting hired for, which turned out to be more drama than comedy. I do comedy just to keep myself sane. But this is one of the challenges, and it gets into other areas, you guys, because now think about what we have. Now we have foreign dubbing, voiceover. Now we have audiobooks, and there's about seven different genres of voiceover in which you can make a living. So this is what happens to us with actor noise. We're at a party, again, skip the two years of the pandemic. We cannot live our lives for the rest of our lives based on the two year abyss from 315.20 to 315.22, which we're gonna hit here shortly. We, we, you, can't, you can't base everything on that. Yes, it will have changed the way we function a bit, but you can't base everything on that. Just understand, you're at a party, you're someplace, oh my God, you're so funny, you should do stand-up. Oh my God, you have such a fabulous voice. Here comes my voiceover voice. You have such a fabulous voice. Have you ever thought about doing radio? Have you ever thought about this? Have you ever thought about... People are not necessarily trying to harm you by saying this, and that's important. The problem is, what effect does it have on you? I came up with Actor Noise as a conversation, ironically, in the Actors Network way back, right around the time I realized what the Actors Network as an organization, and then at that time being a small business, which I wasn't planning on, what it was doing to me. Not in the early years, 91 to 94, but once I opened an office in the summer of 95, and then double page spread and backstage in 98, I think I probably came up with Actor Noise as a conversation somewhere around 98 or 99. And I've been talking about it ever since because no one can stop us. This is the danger. It's not like it's life-threatening, but there's a degree of it that's career-threatening. It is. What do you really want to do? What do you really want to be known for? Yes, I understand we're performers and entertainers. I mean, for the love of God, I'm a Pisces. My birthday was on Saturday. Um, I get that. But what do you really want to be known for? And there are some things that are just likely going to have to become a skill set you have, but you're not trying to get, you're not trying to be Whitney Houston. You're not trying to be, you know, the number one dancer or number or top 40 dancer, you know, in the country based on dancers and what they get paid to do. There's a lot of skill sets. I mean, I, wanted to be a professional athlete. I'm still very, very, very good at a couple of sports, but I'm not trying to make a living at them. Uh, that's the difference. Uh, I understood that a long time ago when I chose this profession. Um, what it, and I became very good at this. This is something that I developed, this skill set. How we address chasing, pursuing, going after, working in this profession psychologically, emotionally, and intelligently as a business pursuit. So the actor noise part can get really frustrating because most of us always say this phrase, I just want to work, man. Like, yeah, I, I hear you 10,000%. Yes, you do. But are you being proficient enough in what you want to do to be able to, and I'm not talking about an individual competition, please know that, it's a competitive industry. 
but I don't view it as an individual competition. Are you making decisions on a daily, weekly basis that, again, here's my three favorite words, you hear it all the time, enhance the likelihood of you being able to compete at a skill set in that area of industry and actor noise around us helps destroy that. And I use the word destroy because destroyed is not visible. It just diminishes the amount of effort, time, focus, passion, whatevs, that you're able to put stuff in this. Like Mike Schoenfeld is still, and he knows way back in the day, and people got mad at me for this, and I'll even, this will even be on my YouTube channel eventually. I had a topical discussion I called Addicted to Theater. And theater people <laughs> would get mad at me. And I wasn't putting down theater at all. I, I've done it in Los Angeles. I'm just sharing with you that doing theater in Los Angeles when you're unknown usually is not going to be the way in a film and television town that you actually become known. It happens, but it's not normal, especially when you're doing it as we did back in the 90s and even since then, in theaters that are 25, 30, and 40 miles away from Sunset and Crescent Heights or wherever your town is, wherever the main hub of Sydney, Melbourne, London, Paris, same thing. Now, Europe is different when it comes to theater. They have a lot more respect for it. But I used to say this to people of like, what does doing one show take out of your life? From rehearsal to doing it to postpartum performance depression syndrome, all that stuff. Uh, you know, it typically was four, five, six months. And if you weren't already working as an actor, that kind of um, alters your momentum. And a lot of this profession, you guys, is momentum. Your work it begets work, work begets work, work begets work. Hey, I'm on that show. Hey, I'm on this show. All of a sudden, just go back and watch the movie The Big Picture, please. Go back and watch The Big Picture with Kevin Bacon and Martin Short. It's genius, still holds up today in Hollywood. Brilliant. Um, and I used to say to people at the Actors Network all the time, you had to watch a triple feature. And if you still wanted to pursue an on-camera profession, then good for you because it was the big picture, the player, and swimming with sharks. So watch all those three back to back on a rainy day and let me know that you still want to go forward because that's my that's my triple feature. But actor noise, and this you have to catch this yourself. No one else can help you out. I can't help you out at the moment. When somebody says, oh, you should do blah, blah, blah. You're really blah, blah, blah. Guys, I love having skill sets. I spent a lot of time actually, um, not only getting rid of my um, Southern dialect, but also learning a lot of others, to the point that I would actually go out to bars and places and people would actually ask me what part of England I was from. I mean, I spent a lot of time getting good at that. I, I believe the first one that I, that I got down to the level of professional was Australian, which in, ironically, I didn't get hired a lot as an Australian, but then I got all of a sudden hired like on one of the greatest shows in television, Lost, as an Australian. So this took time, but it doing a dialect or an accent didn't take away, it's not a career, it's a skill. Singing, dancing, being a top voiceover person, stand-up, improv, those are careers because Saturday Night Live exists. So my entire point about actor noise is not what's right or wrong for you. I do not tell people how to manage their lives and careers. For three plus decades, I have been making this community and engaging with this community in a way to encourage you to have a better understanding of you and a better understanding as a pencil for sale even though you're special, you're unique, and you have skills, what are you going to do? How are you going to do it? That is all I've ever been saying, and that's what you will always get from me underneath every single subject that I discuss, is can this improve your plight and effort to get opportunities to get paid to do this? Because that's all this profession's about, man. This profession is about opportunities, and people get opportunities because they're really good at something they do. Really good. 
ascending to the top, man, there's so much luck and stuff in that. Who the hell knows? As I used to say all the time at the Actors Network, if there was a perfect formula that you could do to become a star, trust me, I would have found it 25 years ago and I would be having this conversation from an island somewhere. So, but there are principles behind being exceptionally talented in a specific field in any profession. The problem for us as a performer is there's no entry barrier to say or do what you want. There's no consequence for doing that in our immediate perception and understanding. And the reality is you're allowed to believe because you have a skill set that just having that skill set, no matter how much you practice it or hone it or continue to do it, that you should just be hired for that all the way through your life because somebody liked you doing it once when you were 19. And that unfortunately just isn't the case because there are too many people out there nationwide and globally in your hood who are just doing one of them. And if they have any skill set at all, just by doing one of them, all the time, they're going to be better than you over time. That's just a given. It doesn't matter what trade or what profession you're in. So just understand my point of actor noise is not trying to stop you. I'm always on your side. I want you to succeed. I'm totally fine with finding out one day your career blew right by mine. Cool. Totally down with it. Not a problem. But I'm sharing with you that if you spread yourself too thin, too much, if you get caught up listening to too many different people, what's going to happen is you're going to wake up in about two or three years and you're going to be exhausted if you're not already and realize that you haven't really moved any one of those three dominoes forward much at all. And that is what actor noise is to me within this profession of somebody who wants to be a behind a microphone or on camera performer. So that is the point of today. Uh, then this is of course going to go on the grid. I'm going to continue to beg y'all to please get all your people to subscribe to the YouTube channel. Uh, and I will be back on Wednesday with another one of these. Uh, and I'm going to keep on doing them and keep on doing the grid for a while but not forever. So make sure y'all are on the YouTube channel so you can get notifications of the new shit that I'll be putting up there. Okay, it's Monday. Everybody go out and make it a great day. Whee! And I'll see y'all or whomever on Wednesday. Peace. It was great to have Jason in and Ben in, and it's nice to see all y'all popping in from time to time. I appreciate it. I know nine o'clock's not the greatest time. Thanks, Cassandra. It's not the greatest time for everybody, but I did it because it's later in the day in Europe and there you go. Uh, I may change the time one day. Who the hell knows? All right, people. Peace and chicken grease. See y'all soon. Wee. Bye. Oh, look. Tamara just came in. Tamara, I got to go. We're ending. It only goes till 930. It'll be on my grid, though, so watch it because it was fun and it's important and it's cool. So I'll see everybody real soon. Okay. Bye.